about wearable technology. So on that note, I want to introduce tonight's speaker. She is the founder of Sonic Wear, a design studio that has developed SOMO, a wireless wearable sensor that generates sound through movement. And Sonic Wear is using SOMO to build a dynamic and integrated approach to teaching creative movement and music. And at Sonic Wear, you can also get access to workshops that engage people of all ages and abilities in a diverse range of learning activities. And these include intros to wearable electronics, digital sound technology, choreography, music composition, and collaboration. So please, everyone, give a warm welcome to the founder of Sonic Wear, Loretta Faberi. introduce you to Denise Miro. She's my collaborator and she's going to do a performance in just a moment. Uh, back in the 90s, Denise and I used to dance together in the Arabesque Dance Company, which is a Middle Eastern belly dance troupe. Denise has continued to dance professionally, but she's also a teacher of dance, Pilates, Alexander Technique, and yoga. She owns and runs the Studio for Movement here in Toronto. Today, Denise is going to do an improvisational dance wearing SOMO, the device that I've been developing that generates sound through body movement. So that you too can experience this magic. 
And by doing this, you can become creative beings, both musically and physically. Today, I'm going to talk about my journey that I've been on towards making this magic happen. So, how do we make magic? Well, we take Kate Hartman's wearable technology class at OCAD University. Kate is an extraordinary wizard and has taught me everything that I know about wearable electronics. I must confess that I only took the class because the pottery class was full. I was in the textile program and had no clue what wearable technology was or what an electronic circuit was. But when I discovered that I could put a sensor on my body and turn my movement into sound, that's when I started to experience this magic through sound and movement. So here's the project, my very first project that involves sound and movement. As I mentioned earlier, I used to be a professional belly dancer. Uh, how many of you have seen a professional belly dancer perform with a live band? Oh, cool. Maybe you can tell me what happens at the very end of the belly dance performance with the drummer? The drum solo? Yeah. So at the end of a belly dance performance, the belly dancer and the drummer have this little interaction. and. The, the dancer's hip, hip, chest, and uh, shoulder accents are synchronized with the beats of the drum. So I thought it would be really cool if the dancer didn't have to rely on the drummer to, uh, to accompany her, her body movements. Why couldn't she make those drum sounds with her own body? So this is um, the first project, keep in mind. And this is what it sounds like. Oops. How do I click on a piece of paper? Ah, there we go. It was a successful project because I was able to synchronize the sound with very specific body movements. This is important when you're creating magic because the audience needs to see the relationship between the movement and, its, and the sound in order to believe that the body is actually making that sound. This is also true for the belly dancer and the drummer. If the dancer misses the beats of the drum, then the performance loses its magic. Because Denise and I have this background in belly dance, we share a unique point of view when it comes to generating sound and movement. For us, body movement is the visualization of sound or music. So what was unsuccessful about this project, as you could hear, the sound quality was very primitive. But it did get me asking questions about how I could improve the sound and push, it, push the sound through high quality speakers so that we could fill a uh, theater. The need to know more led me to take Kate's Wearable Tech 2 class. This is the project called Chance Operations the Body that catapulted me into the realm of where I'm working today. I achieved better quality sound by sending the sensor data wirelessly to my laptop where it could then be processed into sound and then output through quality speakers. Technically, the project had become more sophisticated and theatrical, so I, I wanted to work with a professional dancer. And lucky for me, Denise, uh, who also shares my vision, uh, agreed to work with me and she's still working with me today. 
as a textile artist, this project was very satisfying for me because I was able to explore non-traditional materials like speaker wire in the embellishment of the dance costume. There were about four or five active wires in the costume, but the rest of those wires are ornamental. This is another detail shot showing the accelerometer and the other components integrated directly into the costume. So I am going to play Denise's other performance here. commercialization. 